Hey! So yesterday we talked a bit about bats and the conservation threats that they face. Four of Ontario's eight species are endangered uh, and the program here at the zoo is trying to help turn that around. And I mentioned that one of the biggest threats with bats is that we simply don't know a lot about their ecology or what they're doing. And so a big part of our program is trying to address that. And that means going out to areas like this in the forest at night to research bats and monitor them uh, and learn about what they're doing. And one big way that we can monitor bats is through acoustics. So on Tuesday we talked about how bats find their way in the dark using sound and we can listen in on those sounds. And we do that a lot. We put up a lot of recorders around Ontario and through that we can identify what species are in different areas, what times they're active uh, and learn a lot about them. But we can only learn so much by listening to the bats. So eventually we have to go out and catch them. Uh, and we do this very carefully with big nets uh, so that we can safely catch the bats without harming them. And once we have them in the hand, we can identify their species, we can measure them, we can see if they're having babies, uh, and we can see if they're healthy and how well they're doing. Uh, and this gives us a lot of information about the populations here in Ontario and what they're doing. And sometimes we take things even further, and we want to know where the bats then go to live, where they go to find food. Uh, and to find those things out, we have to track the bats. Tracking bats, though, is a lot of work. We attach a tiny transmitter that weighs a less than 5% of the bat's weight to their back, glued to the fur between their shoulder blades, and that transmitter emits a signal that we can follow with an antenna and find where the bat is going. Although because the bat is so small, the transmitter isn't very powerful, and that means that we have to stay pretty close to be able to detect that signal, and that means a lot of walking. But all those kilometers spent trailing bats around the forest really pays off in the data it gives us, showing where they live, in trees or buildings, and where it is they go to forage. And through this knowledge, we can then contribute to bat conservation and work with partners and landowners to better manage bats and conserve bats on their lands. But it is important to know that when we catch bats, we're specially trained and we know what we're doing, and that's not something you should do at home. Bats can carry diseases, or if you try to pick one up, you can hurt the animal too. So if you find a bat on the ground, don't touch it. Contact an animal rescue and have someone trained come out to pick it up. If you do ever touch a bat, or you think you might have touched a bat or been bitten or scratched, do contact a healthcare provider to get checked out for that. The risk is very low, but it's important to, to deal with that properly. However, even without touching bats, there are things that you can do to help conserve bats and help save Ontario's bats. Uh, and I'm gonna to talk to you tomorrow about those things.